you know what, folks? Look, if you turn on the news, pick up a paper, you browse the internet, just headlines and headlines, I guarantee there's something that pushes your buttons. There's always a topic you just can't help but want to talk about it. And so I got a panel here that's ready to break down some of today's most interesting and controversial stories. But before we get started, there's a quick warning right here to parents out there. Some of this stuff is likely to get a little racy, so you might want to send the kids to another room. Or if your child has a computer, he's seen all of this. <laughs> all right, let's do it. Uh, please welcome from Lifetime's Kim of Queens, pageant coach and mom, Kim Gravel. Buddy from Bravo's hit series of Real Housewives of New York and author of Class with the Countess, Countess Luann. <laughs> and also back again, pop culture guru and TV personality, Carrie Keegan. <laughs> Let's get started. All right. New Year's Eve, Madonna posted a picture online showing her 13-year-old son and his friends holding a bottle of gin and vodka. When everybody got all worked up, she wrote, no one was drinking, we were just having fun. Calm down, get a sense of humor, don't start the year off with judgment. The question is, should parents endorse their kids taking pictures of themselves with booze? <laughs> Kim, what do you think? There's no joking about that. Whether he was drinking or not, uh, what does that message send out to other kids who is following him on his social media? Okay? Mm -hmm. And another thing, it looked like to me she's just trying to be her kid's BFF, and that ain't never gonna work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly think that this is Madonna's attempt to get some PR and to get wow. some love in the media. And I think it's a really, it was what? a really sad attempt to have that done because she knew people were going to talk about it. This was obviously something that people were going to catch on to and be like upset about, <laughs> obviously. Yeah, but you should be a mom before you're a PR specialist. That's Agreed. right. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think, because I've had some go that way, but I think it's a joke <laughs> going bad. I feel badly because from what all I've heard, she's really a great mom. I'm sure she it, is. And, you know, I, I know that she doesn't even drink. I'm, I'm sure that she, Madonna's not even a drinker. I mean, it's a very bad example, and I'm quite shocked that Madge doesn't know any better. So I don't know why she thought it was cool yeah. to send out a picture of her kids on Twitter. Because she's trying to be her kids. Very well, maybe you're right. Maybe she's trying to be cool. This well, is what you I'm know, saying. I, I kind of agree with that, too, because sometimes parents, you know, we lose it. Yep. Our job really is to be parents. Yes. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, if we do some friendly things together, then that's cool. But I'm really your dad, and I'm going to say a lot of stuff you're not going to like. Right. But that's my job. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> and you don't, you don't got to like me. But, Dad! Yeah. Oh, I get that all the time. All right, uh, next, there's a new study that suggests praising your child too much could cause more harm than good. And instead of inspiring children to try new things, this research says that if kids hear they're good at everything, they're afraid to attempt anything in fear that they'll fail. Mm. It's weird. So can praising kids hold them back? That's the question. Kim, as a mom and a pageant coach. This is the thing. I work with teenagers all the time, and these kids, they're so entitled. Steve, I'm gonna be real honest with you. They think everything should come to them easy. We live in a society where everybody gets a trophy. But wake up and smell the roses. You ain't, when you get about 25, you got to pay your own bills, there's no trophies to be given out. Right. And so, you know, yeah, we praise them way too much, and I'm preaching to the choir, so I'm gonna shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Luann, you got kids. I have kids, and I must say they're both artists, and they're both very good artists, but they're certainly not Picasso. So, you know, <laughs> I praise them. I say how good they are, but they have things to learn, and that's what gives them goals and things to aspire to. So, you know, <clears throat> as much as you want to say how great your kids are, yeah, sure, your kids are great. But if you overdo it, then you can set them up for failure. So I totally agree. Not too, I was wow. Saying. Okay. Yeah. Okay, what do you see going on? There's just nothing wrong with healthy competition. We all had it. I remember when I was going through uh, grammar school, they actually, at a certain point, ruled out red pens. You can't correct the papers with red pens. Why? Because apparently it was too stressful for us to see red markings on our paper. That's ridiculous. It doesn't teach you anything except to wow. be a big baby. Well... <laughs> Encouraging a kid is perfectly fine. You should encourage your children. If you don't, you're going to set them up for failure because then the encouragement gives them confidence. Yes. Sure. 
Praising them undeservingly is bad for a kid. Example, my twins, when they were very small, they took violin, they took tap, and they took piano. They sucked at everything. <laughs> Like, I'd be sitting there looking at the recital, and they were playing the piano. They were horrible. Oh, <laughs> and, and a lady leaned over and said, and I was just looking at them, and they said, you're the father of the twins. And I said, no, no, no. <laughs> now, they love fashion. Now, they both in the fashion and all oh, this wow. shit. Go do that. Stop wasting daddy money to damn violin lessons. <laughs> All right, let's do one more. Uh, January Jones is telling people that the reason she has so much stamina is because she's eating her own placenta. <laughs> Apparently, after giving birth, she had her placenta dehydrated and turned into vitamins. Luann, <laughs> you ever consider consuming your placenta? Oh, placenta? I mean, I can't even... <laughs> I can't even... I don't even know what to say. It's 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 horrifying. Um, <laughs> you know, I I've eaten crickets before oh. and, and, the, and in Asia, and that that was an interesting thing. But it's a delicacy in Asia. But but uh, placentas, you know, I wouldn't consider it. I would say there's vitamins. There's plenty of things you can eat. It's weird. Thank you. I'm gonna be real honest. I'm slowly, as we're sitting here at 42 years old, dehydrating anyway. <laughs> <laughs> So if it could stop a few of, of, of the wrinkles and the dimples and all that, I'd do it, but I just don't want to know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I would what definitely do it. And I know that that sounds weird, but no. the, the fact of the matter is that the entire animal kingdom basically does this. This is natural. This is a way of restoring all the things that your body is losing naturally in childbirth. It's not weird. It's not like she's taking it off of the table oh, Lord, and no. biting into this raw piece of meat. That's not what's happening. They also use placenta for, like, face creams and body things. They and put it on your face? Sure. I done been down there by it, but I don't <laughs> think I... It's a good thing those kids went into the other yeah. room, honey. <laughs> we got a lot more to talk about when we come back. We got some interesting viewpoints, three different takes on it. Don't go away. Monday. With Kim Gravel, Countess Luann, and Carrie Keegan, uh, these lovely ladies are helping me break down some of the most gripping topics that are trending in the news today. Uh, here's the next topic. More and more teens are going under the knife for cosmetic surgery. Some kids make the choice because they have a true deformity. But studies show that many kids want surgery as a result of being bullied. So, is it okay for kids to have cosmetic surgery, and when is it not? Your body is not matured when you're, until you're a certain age. And I don't think plastic surgery is necessarily the thing to be running to, to fix things um, that are maybe emotional things that you should be dealing with. You should be building up your self-confidence. You shouldn't be cutting things off of your body because that's only gonna lead to more plastic surgery in the future. Mm -hmm. You're not fixing the problem. I, I, I have to disagree because I think that I think there are certain kids that, you know, have real abnormal features. And, you know, whether it's a cleft lip, um, whether it's a nose that's just ginormous or those kind of Dumbo ears. And, you know, um, I think that there are times when it really messes up with their self-esteem and it's holding them back that why not? Change it. Why I, not if you can? I just think we need to make the main thing the main thing. And we've got so much emphasis on exterior, how, how we look on the exterior. We're not even building the interior. The fact that we're even talking about kids having plastic surgery is, quite frankly, should be illegal. Mm -hmm. And we should, not, we should not put that kind of pressure on these kids. I'm telling you, I was so ugly. I know it's hard to believe. <laughs> <laughs> But I was so unattractive as a child, <laughs> and being unattractive has made me who I am today. Yeah. Yes. I, I agree with that. I agree, I agree with that. I wanted a lip reduction <laughs> when oh, I was young. Oh, no, 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 no. Except no. there was no such a thing back then. <laughs> Nobody had plastic surgery. I wanted a lip reduction because I got tired of kids teasing me about it. But imagine if I had reduced these things, and then my head yeah. continued to grow at the rate that it was growing. <laughs> You can take a deformity as a kid, like really huge lips, and you can work with them. Because, like, right now, I can't tell you. 
I can't tell you the situations and the value these lips yeah. have oh. when they're put on you. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Let me explain something to you. Once you get good and grown, oh. I put these on you, no. you in a real situation. <laughs> you in a real situation. Let's move on to the next topic. <laughs> Ladies, I think it's safe to say that at one point, you have asked the question, do I look fat? Everybody has said that. <laughs> Moms may want to stop asking because a researcher at the Mayo Clinic says that mothers have the biggest influence on their daughter's body image. This includes moms who only talk about their own looks and never even mention their daughter's oh. looks. Now, as a panel of women, let me ask you this. Do you all feel that moms are a big influence on body image? Absolutely, absolutely. With Victoria, I, take the, I took the scales when she was a teenager. I took them out of the house because she was so freaked out about her weight and that scale. And by taking the scale out of the picture, it was so much better for her. Um, so I think really what you have to be as a role model for your children, you have to talk about good nutrition and exercise and things like that and not about fat and weight and just be set a good example. I couldn't be happier with that statement. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but have you guys seen, there's a video that went out by uh, Global Democracy, it was online, and they basically showed the before and afters of what you can take a, a normal oh, person I saw this. and make her into a, a Barbie doll, basically. That's not real. That's the exact opposite of real, and yet that's what we are sort of looking at every day, going, oh, well, that's what you're supposed to look like. And I've actually had this done to me before. I worked my ass off in the gym to get into the best possible shape I could for a photo shoot in a bikini. And so I sat there and watched the photo editors scale me down even oh, yeah. further. I thought I looked fine. I thought I, I was so proud of myself that I worked see, that hard. But see, let me let me help ladies understand something. The lady on the top, ain't nobody mad at that. No, nope. no. Nope. See, I want you to understand something about men. Ain't nobody mad at the That's lady what at I the was top. Say. Right. Ain't nobody. I think they should ban Photoshop. But this is it. Now wait a minute. I love Photoshop. They I need it. it. You don't need it, but I need Photoshop. <laughs> So let me, as the largest one in this group, say something. <laughs> I want to say this. I want to challenge this um, survey because I think we're missing an opportunity here for dads to speak into their daughters. Because I know for me, as a girl growing up, my father would tell me how beautiful I am. My mom would still say she was fat. But my dad telling me how beautiful I was and how unique I was, that's why I think I'm beautiful today. Yeah. Not because my mom said she was fat. You're, you're, you're absolutely correct. You see what correct. I'm saying? We need you men. That's an important role That's for a man to yes. play. I've had to play that role my entire sure. life. I don't let my daughters think for a moment right. that they're not beautiful. Yes. Ladies, thank you so much. Love having you. Catch Kim Gravel on Lifetime's Kim of Queens Tuesdays at 9 p.m.